Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the new Cheerson CX-17 Cricket. And this is kind of a newer, updated version of the Cheerson CX-10WD that I reviewed a few months back. Uh, it's a bigger all, all around and it has bigger motors, slightly bigger props, comes with a 0.3 megapixel uh, Wi-Fi FPV camera. It takes uh, videos and pictures via Wi-Fi and it has the same uh, controller as that model as well. So this model comes with altitude holds so the throttle position is going to be centered like all the other um, altitude hold drones. Now the actual control is going to be via the transmitter here and it's a 2.4 gigahertz and the video is going to be transmitted to your phone via uh, Wi-Fi and uh, there's a little phone holder here for that. Um, you can also control the uh, drone with the phone itself with the on-screen controls and also with the uh, built-in gyro using the tilt tilting of the phone mechanism. Um, I've demonstrated that in other videos and I actually don't like uh, flying those drones with the phone like that. It's just I find it to be uh, very difficult so I'll just be flying it with the transmitter and then recording the video on the phone. So the battery this comes with is a proprietary battery. It's a 1S 400 milliamp hour battery. And it comes in this plastic case and there's a little charge port here on the side. And it charges via uh, this USB charger. So it does take a bit of time to charge this battery. It takes about an hour. And you get about five minutes of flight time for the whole battery. And just snaps in like that and then it has a little locking mechanism here in the back. You got a little on off switch here in the back to turn it on off and you got a little uh, Wi-Fi antenna here for your Wi-Fi FPV. It's so a quick look at the manual. It's pretty straightforward like a lot of the Cheerson products that I reviewed previously. If you just go through the manual you'll find that uh, it's pretty easy to set up. You do have to download the Android app or the uh, iOS app here and it gives you instructions on how to get those and also the QR codes to get the links for those. Um, I'll actually go over the on-screen uh, display here on the phone itself here in a moment. But it's really, uh, it's actually pretty decent manual for a toy quad. Okay, so to basically set this up, it's pretty easy. You uh, first turn on the drone itself using the switch. And you'll start, the lights will start flashing. Uh, you want to turn on your transmitter. And then to bind, you just hit the throttle up and down, and then the lights will turn solid. Uh, because it's altitude hold, you have to use the uh, one-touch launch and uh, land buttons here on the side to initiate any uh, flying. The controls don't do anything until you do that. Uh, you have a, a mode one, two switch here on the side, and a video and picture button here on the side as well. There's no other buttons on here and no other trim controls. You have to actually do trimming on the phone screen. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so you have to go into your phone here and connect via Wi-Fi to the drone itself. So you go ahead and turn your Wi-Fi on. And I'll scan for the network and then it should show up as here as a CX-17 Wi-Fi. And I'll go ahead and it'll go ahead and connect to it. And then you can go ahead and launch your app. And then just to see the video, you just hit the start button. Okay, so you can see here I got the camera facing my workbench here. And uh, the image is very zoomed in. It's a very narrow field of view. So uh, I was flying this around trying to fly at FPV. There's a little bit of a lag as well. As you can see here, Leah, get both the quad and the phone screen in shot. You can see as I move it, there is a bit of lag so it's very difficult to fly this FPV so this is mainly for flying it indoors and maybe taking some selfies or just doing a little bit of uh, video shots and photos from the from the drone uh, but it isn't really meant for flying FPV. I, I'm sure that if you practiced enough you could probably fly it in a larger space via FPV probably not indoors. I did try to fly this outdoors and in any kind of wind uh, this thing just gets blown all over the place. Uh, it's been very windy here lately, so I haven't been able to do much outdoor flying because the winds have been about 30 miles an hour in the afternoons, and so uh, pretty much unrealistic to fly something this small in those kind of winds. So I'm just going to be doing a demo flight indoors. 
Okay, so here's a quick look at the on-screen controls. And you can actually fly this thing via the on-screen controls if you want to. Although I, I, I find it personally very difficult to do so. And you can also use the, uh, gyro, the phone gyro to use the phone tilting mechanism. Now because there's no trim buttons on the actual transmitter, you have to do the trimming on the phone controller. However, I found that when I switched to the phone controller, the transmitter stopped working. So it was a bit kind of cumbersome to go back and forth between trimming and then going back to the transmitter. Uh, if you're going to do, they probably should try and fly it, trim it using the phone controls, and then then rebind the actual transmitter. And then hopefully, the, uh, I'm thinking that the trims will maintain itself. So you can actually do a one-touch takeoff here with that the button here and a one-touch landing here as well, the 360 for flips. Uh, you got uh, this button here, the little eye that turns the um, on-screen controls on and off. And then there's this button over here called trace mode, so you can actually hit that, trace on the screen, and it'll actually move the quad in the air. I've tried that, it, 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 it kind of works, but it's a little bit funky and I think that would, would take a lot more um, practice to get used to that and I, I recommend doing that in a larger area because it's kind of unpredictable as to where the quad is going to go. It actually kind of goes off in its own direction. It's kind of like uh, setting a path on the screen so they tell, tell the drone where to go and then automatically it does that, traces that route and it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of un unpredictable. You got your rates button here, the 30%, you can change that to 60 and 100%. Um, Basically, it's very docile on 30%, and then uh, the, even at 100%, it's still pretty docile and easy to control. You can also change your rates using pressing in the throttle button here on the left. That'll do the same thing. If you need to recalibrate your accelerometer, hit the uh, little scale here, and that'll, if you put it on a flat surface, and it'll, it'll actually level it out again in case it starts drifting all over the place. So go ahead and I'll uh, run some... Uh, line of sight flight footage of the uh, CX-17 and also give you some of the uh, onboard video as well. Put some video here. I'm going to turn off the on-screen controls. I'm just going to launch it using the transmitter. So there's a little bit of drift but it's not too bad. So if you're a beginner, this is not, not a bad drone to try out. Pretty easy to control, you just have to use the right stick. You can do yaws with the left stick and it maintains altitude pretty easily. You can see here. Get a little closer shot at it. So the yaw is pretty slow, it says 60%. And when you yaw, it doesn't seem to lose altitude as much as the uh, CX-10WD did. Altitude does drift a little bit. It's fairly easy to fly indoors when there's you know, obviously there's no wind to uh, move it around. I haven't touched the throttle stick at all, just yawing, not actually changing the altitude. So bring it down here, and then I'll try the one touch landing, and then there it goes, it just dies. It looks like the app has crashed. I'm going to relaunch the app and see what happened here. I think when I was recording the video, it crashed in the middle of it, so let's try that again. And let's take off again.
So it is starting to drift a little bit now. At the beginning uh, of the battery, it didn't drift very much at all, but now it's drifting a little left a bit. Uh, 60% race is pretty, pretty fast. I'm going to change the rate again. Let's change it to 100%. Now we'll have more control, but it can, you can get into trouble as well. Let me raise this up a little bit. It's 100% rates going forward. I just have some a little bit of pep here at the wall over there. Even at harms and rates, it, it seems like the controls is a little bit laggy. I think the advertised flight time is probably correct. It looks like you're getting about four to five minutes. I'm going to give that a uh, trace mode a try here. See what it does. Interestingly, nothing happened there. The on-screen display uh, completely disappeared that time. The app is kind of buggy. It crashes quite a bit and weird things happen like the buttons disappear for no reason. Let's try this again. Yeah, I can't seem to get this to work at this point. Probably a feature is still in development. But I definitely like flying it with the transmitter, with the actual real stick. I think it's just because I'm, some, I'm just used to that. Flying it on the uh, phone screen is just foreign to me. Alright, I'm going to try to do a landing from a little bit higher up to see what, what it does. There you go. So it doesn't just completely drop out of the sky. It just, I guess, sends uh, where the ground is and um, cut the motors uh, as soon as it touches the ground. So that seems to work pretty well. Go ahead and stop the video. Yeah, for some whatever reason, I can't seem to get this to work. I did try it before, and I ended up crashing because it ended up going somewhere I didn't expect. Uh, let me see if I can't get the on-screen controls to come back. If I do that, supposedly you can draw like that, and then it'll trace out that path on the screen, as you can see here, um, when it's flying, obviously. But I think it has something to do with the fact that either you have control over the quad via the phone or the transmitter. You can have simultaneous control. I have to kind of go back and forth. So I think if I launched it with uh, uh, the on-screen controls, uh, I'll, it'll, it'll probably work again. So let me give that a try. I'll launch it. Let's recalibrate uh, the accelerator. Let's try that again. I'm going to just try and fly with the on-screen controls. Let's, let's uh, see what happens here. Ooh. All right, let's try the trace thing again. There it goes. Stop. Oh. Yeah, so I don't recommend using that trace function unless you just want the quad going off on its own. 
somewhere in that direction. It'll just keep on going. Um, I've never had success with that, and I just crashed it. So uh, the on-screen controls seem to work okay as well. Although I just I hate flying that. I prefer the transmitter. Seems to fly pretty well with the transmitter. Uh, can't complain about that. I, I always like the transmitter sticks. Okay guys, so that's my review of the Cheerson CX-17 Cricket. It's a fun little quad, comes with its own little transmitter. You can use your phone to record some video. Uh, flies pretty good inside, uh, easy to control. Altitude hold works pretty well. I uh, wouldn't recommend flying this outside though in any kind of winds. Um, yeah, it's just uh, too hard to control any kind of winds. It's not enough power. But if you're a beginner, for 40 bucks, it's not bad to give this a try. Um, I think it's definitely worth checking out. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.